Hello and welcome back to my channel. It is day 8 of my book reading. So let's get going to the spooky book reading topic. <laughs> so for this one, we'll be doing cursed objects around the world. I think it's fascinating that we still, that we actually have these kind of things in this world. <laughs> I don't know, just something about them kind of just fascinates me just because they have been here over the years, so. And they're still here today. Well, most of them, I should say, but let's find out what they are. The first one is the Annabelle doll. The doll's name comes from the alleged doll who possesses it. In the early 1970s, a young college student named Donna gave the doll to Anne and Lorraine Rowan, a now famous, courtesy of, in a, a now famous pair of paranormal investigators. Originally, Donna received the doll as a gift from her mother, who purchased it in an antique shop. Over time, Donna and her roommate noticed that the doll had a tendency to move. Being from locations throughout the apartment, all positions of bright legs crossed. Later, after these realizations, things escalated. Donna would find notes meaning to help in the apartment, and one night, Eva even came home to Annabelle, repositioned and covered in a mint substance. That's when she decided to contact the medium. She found it in the answer. The medium told the girls that the doll was inhabited by the spirit of someone who was killed during the building. However, when the caution friend the voice is concerned, something more sinister was afoot. The story goes that Annabelle attacked and killed Lou when he got up to investigate noises while hanging out at the girls' apartment one night. And then once in, the girls contacted the Raven the Morans via a priest, who decided the doll contained a demon straight from hell. When an exorcism failed to do the trick, the Romans agreed to move the doll to a secure location, inside a glass box at the museum in Connecticut. And, and here's a fun fact, I like how it's depicted in the films on which in space, the real Annabelle is actually a raggedy Ann doll. Honestly, I don't really believe Warrens to be the real investigators. I honestly think they're frauds. I don't know, something about them just doesn't seem like, just seems off. Like, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, I don't believe they're real investigators. I think they actually make things worse than they already are. Just my opinion. I don't know about you guys. Let me know. But this was probably my favorite story. Even though the, the, unlik the unlikely story that comes with it is gruesome, I think. <laughs> but this is the Hope Diamond. Weight 45 color, color violet status haunted perhaps. It's one of the most famous diamonds in the world, so maybe um, although many have speculated that reports of a curse are simply out Okay, well that was fun. I had issues after reading that. Whatever. <laughs> speculated that reports of a curse are simply efforts to increase the object's air of mystery. In its earliest form, the diamond which was most likely cut from a mine in India is said to have been stolen from a statue. The thief was subjected to an extremely unfortunate death. This kicked off what seemed to be a string of upsetting fates for many of the individuals who owned or even touched it over the years. Jacques Collet died by suicide. Princess de Lambelle was killed in a massacre in the French Revolution. And Merchant Jean La Tavernier was mauled by wild dogs, just to name a few. And so since Harry Winston donated the diamond to the Smithsonian to the Smithsonian in 1958, the alleged curse seems to have abated. I doubt it. In all honesty, I doubt it. But to each their, to each their own. My next one, this is also my favorite one, but I'm so sad as to what happened to it. And there's a terracotta on me. And it's a humming of an extremely unfair situation. Farmers discovered the iconic terracotta figurines of warriors, chariots, and horses which depict the army of the first emperor of China in 1974. The works of art were buried with the emperor in 2010 BC to commemorate his empire, and the area has since become a destination, a UNESCO one, for travelers all around the world to cross off the bucket list. Over time, though, the farmers in the land they lived off became overshadowed by the government, businessmen, and third-party officials who wanted nothing more than to gaze and profit upon the warriors. And the farmers received not a dime for a fine. That is so unfair. They should have gotten, like, something for it. Like, I'm sorry, but that's unfair. In fact, the 2,000-year-old village, which originally believed that disturbing the army 
will cause mis misfortune was sure enough unfortunately claimed by the state and demolished, only to be substituted for gift shops. That is why I am still upset with this one. Like, how could you, how could they do this such a thing? Ah, some people just don't appreciate history. Number four is the goddess of death statue, aka the woman from the lake. The artifact was crafted at 3500 BC and found in Cyprus in 1878. And of the families that belong to the over, to over the generations, each one has been torn by torn apart by death. Within six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family had perished. Once the second owner, Ivo Menkuchi, acquired it, death came for him and his family after only four years. The statue then vanished for a long while, but when a new third family eventually laid claim to it, several members died. However, two of the naming members very wisely donated the artifact to the Royal Scottish Museum. That's crazy. I'm so for stumbling. I don't know why I'm stumbling all of a sudden. And now it's not because I'm reading these cursed so stories. Come on, you guys. <laughs> and this is also my favorite one. I've actually been inspired to write a whole book from this. It was for my day 12 or 10. I can't remember, but it's when I attempted to write a horror book. And this is where the inspiration came from. The Dark Mirror. The world's only mobile museum of the unexplained holds is mysterious reflector, which seems to literally take a life of its own. The museum obtained it from the original owner who purchased it while attending a psychic fair in the Columbus area. That same owner said they were struck with very upsetting visions when gazing into the screen mirror's dark reflection. According to the museum, visitors also claim to have also reported Uncomf uncomfortable sightings such as their own comps when gazing into the reflective glass. Fun fact, screen mirror is not supposed to do that, it's just for meditation and manifestation, so on and so forth. I wish people would do their researches. <laughs> so this one also kind of interesting and something I have never heard of until today. All the other ones that I just mentioned, mentioned I, I am familiar with them, but this one's pretty neat too. So this is the chained oak. This ancient oak tree near the village of Elton, Staffordshire, England, is undoubtedly one of the scariest looking trees you will ever look at. Of course it's in England. England, what did you all do? <laughs> Covered in huge western chains, it looks as though the tree may have once roamed around the forest, picking up wanderers who dare disturb its arboreal realm before the villagers captured it and changed it to its current spot. The real legend is just as frightening. Legend has it that the Earl of Shrewsbury, who lived at the Grand Estate of Alton Towers, now a pretty decent theme park, was traveling back home one evening when his carriage was stopped by a lone beggar woman. The very lady asked the Earl for a penny, and when he rudely dismissed her, cursed the Earl, stating that for every branch that fell from the old oak tree, a member of his family would perish. That night, a great storm ripped one of the limbs from the tree, and by the morning, one of the old mem family members had passed away horribly. The fine nobleman then ordered that the oak be bound and chained so that no more branches could be fall. Now, can you imagine Beauty and the Beast? Was that where the inspiration came from? Because the prince also turned away the woman after asking for shelter, and then the storm came and he got changed into a beast. It kind of, it's kind of a struggle, I know. This is also quite really interesting and that is Merlin's Oak. This one is related to the wizard Merlin from the Arthurian legend, the original Welsh versions, though. The town of Carmathian is, according to the signs, when you enter by road, the oldest town in Wales. So old, in fact, its very origins have been linked to Meridian Merlin, giving rise to the town names Carmathian, the fort of Merlin. A large oak once stood in the town believed to have been planted, by the wandering wizard. A prophecy accompanied the ancient tree when Merlin's oak fan comes tumbling down, then shall fall Carmathian town. When a tree did finally get removed after years of decay, the very next year the town suffered a train derailment and some of the most severe flash flooding recorded. A branch taken from the tree is still displayed in the local museum, perhaps keeping this beautiful town from a fury apocalypse. I mean, if you take another branch, wouldn't the same thing happen? Just me? Okay. And number two is Haunted Ledger, a common element in tales of Haunted of 
class object is a consequence faced by the living for removing an artifact or item from its rightful place, prompting a supernatural forces to play havoc until it's returned. I mean, I think it's common sense not to take anything. I'm just saying. <laughs> After the demolition of the Strolling Folks Jewelries in the city of Brighton and England's south coast, builder Tony Bennett Woods removed an old shop legend book he found hidden behind a brick wall. He took the interesting example of Rita Memorial Wall back to his home in Mainstone, Kent, 65 miles away. Soon, soon enough, his family were being plagued by all manner of otherworldly phenomena, strange voices, ghostly apparitions, and even strange images of people appearing in the family's rug. One particularly uppity up spirit informed Mr. Ben Wright's daughter, Josephine, that the book needed to be returned to its hometown by the century of the first entry within its crumbling pages. Not wanting to anger these along with their jewelries, the family donated the book to Plenston Manor, repeatedly, Brighton's most haunted house, which is where we now reside. I really want to see that book now. <laughs> and my final one is Portrait of Delphine La Lurie. In the 1990s, the resident of an apartment building which stands on the spot of La Lurie's in famous Chamber of Horrors once turned decided to pull the assets and brighten up the communal spaces with some new artworks. What better way could there be to achieve this goal than to commission local artist Ricardo Pozzano to paint him a portrait of a notable local celebrity. Who could this be? Louise Armstrong. They chose a lovely cheery portrait of Madame Delphine La Lurie, and it turned out to be haunted. She bone chilly encounters with the ghost of La Lurie, culminating in the portrait being taken down, covered up, and stored away securely. So those are all the cursed objects around the world. Let me know what is fascinating to you. Personally, I like the Atmos necklace and a dark mirror. Those two really st stood out to me. So yeah, um, honestly, this was most a fun book of me. Otherwise, please like, comment, subscribe, so even though I find every time I post, and I'll see you on tomorrow. See you then.